welcome to Over 50 So What? From my home to yours. I know a lot of people watching this can't get out and about much at the moment. So it's a great chance to look at the things that you might want to do when things start to get back to normal. We love to have fun on this show and go a little bit crazy. So I hope you like my crazy jacket. People have uh, said I look a bit like Beetlejuice when I wear this jacket. Today, we're gonna to meet Andrew Jobling, speaker and author. And if you're passionate about nature, we're gonna have a look at an activity that you might wanna get involved in. And of course, don't forget the five minute fitness segment. Now, we have energy for life. Energy for Life. We're very excited today to have Andrew Jobling on the show. Andrew is a professional footballer for seven years, has over 30 years experience in the health and well-being industry, and he is a best-selling author of seven books, including, listen to this one, Eat Chocolate, Drink Alcohol, and Be Lean and Healthy. That sounds good to me. And his latest book, The Wellness Puzzle. Today we're going to be talking to Andrew about joyful longevity. Hi Andrew and welcome to Over 50 So What? We're so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you Carol, I'm excited to be here and I, you know, the, even the fact that I am over 50 and I'm willing to admit it but I'm bouncing around and full of energy and very excited to be with you. Today we're going to be talking about longevity and as you know I've had an interest in that area as well and I had a TV show in the past called journey to longevity and what inspired me to get into this topic was my dad who at 93 and a half he was still driving a car he was still living independently living a joyful long life and today you're going to share with us and the viewers how to have a joyful longevity but first how did you get involved or inspired to get into this topic well, Carol, I have been in the health and wellbeing industry for 30 years. So clearly I started when I was five years old. And I mean, health and wellbeing has always been an interest of mine. But, you know, I think just I just want to differentiate between longevity and joyful longevity. I mean, I'm not into just living a long life. It needs to be a long, joyful, happy purposeful, loving, wonderful, achieving life is what I'm talking about. Well, I guess I got into it because uh, I wanted to inspire people to be healthier. And and I just, along this journey, I found my own purpose and I thought, I love my life. I really love it. I want to be here for as long as I can. So my goal you know, for, quite a, for quite a few years has been to live to 100 years old, joyfully. Not as old. And I, just, I think it's possible. I think we can all do it. I think very much we just need to I guess have a reason to do it. So can we hear how to do it? What are the tips for having a joyful longevity? Oh, yes, there are tips. And I think it's interesting because I've always been of the belief that if you eat well and exercise regularly, then you'll be healthy and live a long life. But there was so much uh, evidence to the contrary. You talked about your dad. You know, my Hungarian great grandmother lived to 97. She smoked a carton of cigarettes a week. She drank brandy every day. She ate rich Hungarian food. Now, I could never, ever, ever work it out until I, I got into the topic and I thought, okay, so what is this key to longevity? And what it seems from a lot of the research now is that the people that are living the longest are the people that are able to find joy, the people that are able to find gratitude, the people that are able to forgive, the people that are able to keep themselves in a, an emotional state that strengthens their physiology, that strengthens their DNA and their immune system and their brain health and keeps all these positive, healthy hormones surging through their body. Now, don't get me wrong, we still need to eat well and exercise and I certainly don't suggest people start smoking a carton of cigarettes a week or drinking brandy every day. <laughs> it seems to be attitude, it seems to be mindset that is the key to joyful longevity. And 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 I really believe the first step in the process is, is work out what's most important. You know, you need to find, really focus on what you're here for. Because I know for me, my purpose is helping people. And, and, and it is, and ever since I published my first book, over 15 years ago, I realized my purpose is to 
have a positive impact in people's lives. And every day since then, I've bounced out of bed. I've had a positive attitude. I've had gratitude and I've had all these joyful thoughts in my mind that have helped keep me healthy. So the first tip really is find and identify and focus on what's most important. Second thing is understand the power of your mind, understand the power of your thoughts, because every thought we have leads to an emotion. So when we think about things we want and what we like and what we're good at or what we can learn or the things we're striving for, it will lead us to a positive, healthy emotion like excitement or joy or determination. On the other hand, when we start focusing on things that we don't like or don't want or we're not good at or we don't have, it tends to lead us to anxiety or it tends to lead us into an emotional state that will have an immediate physiological impact on our body. Can you tell us a bit about this forgiveness, the emotion of forgiveness and gratitude and how, how important that is? You know, there's a couple of real key, key emotions to focus on and as you said, Carol, so... I think joy, you know, we can always find things to be joyful for, no matter what's happening in our world. There's always something that we can find to focus on that will give us joy that we're, that is positive. And I think that's the first thing you want to look at. The second thing is, what am I grateful for? And I think what a wonderful thing to do every morning to wake up, make a list of things that you're grateful for, no matter what happens, when something again, when something happens that's not ideal, and you go, oh, I wish that didn't happen, but I'm grateful that, you know, I get a speeding fight in the mail, or I get a bill, or, or something happens that I don't want, I go, well, that's not fantastic. However, I'm grateful that I can pay that speeding fight, or I can pay for that bill. Now, forgiveness is a really interesting one, because so often we hold on to resentment, we hold on to bitterness, we hold on to anger, uh, and that, my goodness, there's a saying that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. And when you hold on to that anger or that bitterness, there's only one person that is being affected and that's you. So forgive, first person to forgive is yourself. We all do things that we regret. We all do things that we wish we hadn't done. We say dumb stuff. We do things that we think, oh, but we do them. So. Get over it, forgive yourself, you're a human. That's what we do as humans. Forgive yourself for that reason, then you can forgive other people. So when you can forgive, immediately, there's a peace that, you can feel this, this peace flood over your body. And what that feeling is, is those positive endorphins and positive hormones and reactions in your body, strengthening your ability to live a life of joyful longevity. Great tip number four is understand a ripple effect. And this is really powerful. I think a lot of people have trouble making good choices around eating breakfast or exercise or the way they react to things. And I want you to really think about everything, every thought you have, every emotion you experience, everything you say and do will have a ripple effect and will impact people that you care about most. So when you're about to say something or do something, just think about who is going to be impacted by that choice. There is always, always a ripple effect. So when you understand that and you're aware of that, that will then help you to make amazing choices. And the last thing is just that ability to, to capture unhealthy emotion or at least acknowledge it because there's no such thing as bad emotion. So whenever you feel anxiety, stop and go, okay, I'm feeling it, acknowledge it, be aware of it, it's okay, validate it and go, what am I thinking that's leading to this, um, this anxiety? Okay, the thought is that I'm worried that I can't do something. Well, okay, how do I change that? How do I go, well, maybe I can find something that can help me. And immediately, the anxiety is gone because you found the solution. So when you're good at being aware of how emotions playing out in your body, be able to go, okay, well, that, that emotion is happening what's the thought if it's a good emotion if it's a happiness or a joy then you want to keep doing what you're doing and thinking what you're thinking but if it's something around resentment or bitterness or anxiety or stress then maybe you want to look at the thought that's leading to that emotion and see how you can change the thought so there you go there are five tips carol so andrew thank you so much for sharing your uh, valuable expertise and experience with us today we, we can't wait to have you on the show again and uh, pick your brains a bit more really excited for people to take on board some of this stuff so they can join us carol because we're going to get to 100 and we're going to be dancing around so we need lots of people there with us i'll send you the invite to the party okay <laughs> yahoo i'll be there if you'd like to know more about joyful longevity and andrew 
jump on our website and also join us on Facebook page. That'd be great. Now after the break, it's time to get moving. So get ready to jump on your feet. And if you're not feeling very stable, you can just grab a chair, just use this for support. Today we're going to look at great exercise for balance. So we're just going to do some standing on one leg or raising one knee. So you can just use this to keep yourself confident. And then we might do a bit of grooving in the middle. Lift it and groove. Then facing the chair if you're not very confident and just touching your foot to the side. Touching it to the side and touching it to the front. Just giving you that bit of stability. And of course, you can always do it sitting in the chair as well. So give it a go and let's do it. Up, 
about nature? Do you care about our environment? Our natural environment is in trouble. Climate change is a real thing as we know with the Australian bushfires. And there's many things we can do to help. Man unfortunately has introduced invasive species which are damaging the natural habitat, bird life and wildlife. In Australia we've got rabbits, foxes, deer, cane toads, carp, mice, many, many, many introduced species which are wreaking havoc with our native environment. So take a look at your local area, your local bush area, your local wildlife area. Maybe you can help the local penguins by knitting cardigans for them, echidnas, koalas, maybe little possums you can take home and look after. What is it you can do in your local area? Well today I'm in New Zealand at Christmas and I have the opportunity to set and clear traps for rats, stoats and weasels and that's all to help the poor endangered kiwi bird. Now clearing smelly rat traps may not be your thing but there are many many ways that you can help the natural environment. Now let's go catch some rats. Welcome to Boxing Day. A lot of people are sitting around, drinking more, eating more, eating all the leftovers from Christmas. But we're out there. We're going to be going in the bush for about four, three or four hours, clearing rat traps, doing something great for the New Zealand bush. Because rats in New Zealand introduced, they kill 25 million native birds every single year. So we're going to kill some rats or we're going to find some rats in the rat traps. And we might find some stoats as well. And stoats are destroying the kiwi population. 40 chicks a day are being destroyed by the stoats, which means 15,000 kiwi chicks are being lost every year. So the kiwis, are, their numbers are declining. So we're gonna try and do something good for nature and for wildlife. I've got here my trusty pot of peanut butter to put on the traps and a knife to clean out the traps, etc. You'll see that later. And some secateurs to cut back introduced plants as well, the annoying plants that shouldn't be in the bush. So check out your bush near you, check out your local wildlife, see if there's something you can do to help get rid of pests in your area. So this is the little hidden entrance to the Kiwi Trust. So to start off with, we come and we pick up some rabbit. Is this rabbit meat? Salted rabbit meat. Salted rabbit meat from the Kiwi Trust. And we, we get some eggs and we sign in the book to let them know we're cleaning, we're out on the track and we've done the traps on a particular day. That's all. This shows there. a lot of the lines. So people are allocated specific lines to go to. And then we'll be coming back here 
to record how many rats and stoats and if there's none that's a really good thing <laughs> <laughs> so this is a stoat track so a stoat trap has been designed specifically for catching those stoats that kill all the kiwi chicks so we're going to open it up and then reset it one that uh, just there's, died. Yeah. a skull of one that's just died. Yeah. Wow, it's quite trap. big, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the state. So what I'm doing here is just clearing the, as if an animal was using this, you know, so, if a, so as the rats come along or the soats come along, they can see that there's been some sort of activity here. So, right. top. And inside we've got a trap which is set. Wow. And what happens is as the stoat goes through, that's like a That's like a big mouse trap. Yeah. So that means there's nothing in this trap. No. So what is part of the maintenance, we just set them off. And this is the... So why, is there two traps in each one? Yes, so they, they can come in either end and they'll have got to go through a trap to uh, get to the bait. Oh, so the bait's in the middle. Yeah, and so they that's can come... in the middle like that. So what we need to do... So is... you could actually get two stoats in one trap? Uh, yes, possibly. Never done that, um, but uh, it can happen. So that's salted rabbit, rabbit, okay. rabbit meat. What's the oil, is it? Yes, it's just, um, just occasionally. You don't have to do it every time, but um, it just... Uh, and we wear gloves so that you don't get any human scent on the traps. Oh, cool. So you've got to be careful to keep your fingers out of the way because when they go off, you certainly feel it. <laughs> so it just sits on the edge like that? Yeah, just balance it so it's right. sitting on that. The very light oil is a lot easier because it just comes in a little, little tin. Yeah. And it's got a nozzle. But you don't put the oil on every trap every time? No, no. Um, this one we haven't done for probably six weeks. Okay, let's, we're moving on now. Well, so far we've not found any rats, which is a good thing that the numbers are down. But we just did find one right here. That's neck broken, looks a bit nasty. This just shows you the track and the thick bush that we're going through. So just come up that hill. Come over here, climbing over lots of roots. So you probably hear me puffing a bit. That's good, building a nice strong hut. Okay, well I've got the hang of doing this now, so that you can see me in action actually doing it. Doing the bit. Maybe there's a rat on here, maybe there's not. Ah, no, it's not set off. But that's good. Take the cap out, hold my finger down here. Just release that a little bit. And then let it go. Get the scratchy thing out. Scrape off all the mouldy, rotten peanut butter. Creep out underneath it, hold it down with my thumb. Put that back there. Now I'm going to put the peanut butter on. Yum! Lucky rats. At least their last meal is a good one. Put the peanut butter on. That's it. Now delicately. I'll put this under there. Whoops, it's a bit tight this one. Now I'm going to let it grow slowly. Hold it, that's it. And now some of these are hard to get in, you have to turn sideways, they're a bit tight, but hopefully this one came out pretty easy, so we'll see how we go. Oh, that's the easiest one I've done. Then I go to the other end, make sure that all oh, this and leaves there blocking, blocking the rats and from going in. So there we go, we did one. I've done lots, but anyway, I'm doing it. Well, we've finished the track. We've done about 24 stoat traps, about 48 rat traps. If you work out how many kilometers, it's about 600, no, 600, six <laughs> kilometers through the bush, up and down, like I showed you on the video. And uh, get out there and help nature and the wildlife. We were all touched recently by the millions of birds, wildlife, koalas that were destroyed in the Australian bushfires. And we can do something to help. So why not contact your local wildlife office, your local conservation body, see what you can do, whether it's looking after baby bilbies, baby possums, or getting rid of an invasive species. 
It's a great opportunity to meet people as well, and you feel like you're doing something beneficial for the planet. One person can make a difference. Thanks for joining us today. Over 50, so what? In spite of all the things that are going on in the world today, make sure you find some time to laugh and have some fun. And I've got a challenge for you. When this show is over, pop on some music, get up and do some crazy moves. Or when you're out doing your walk, go a bit crazy, you're allowed. more information about the things you've seen on the show today or just jump on our website and if you want more replays you want fitness videos jump on YouTube and join us on Facebook over 50 so what so now pop on some music get on your feet and go crazy watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and we'll send you the latest TV episodes and videos. Like our Facebook page and please send us your comments, your stories and any inspiring people that you know. Over 50, so what?